Welcome to Woven Daily. I'm Peter Allen, first time you'll see me on this. I'm a retired vicar and I'm helping with Woven particularly at St John's and All Saints. Right, let's move on. Acts 1, 4-5 While staying with them, Jesus ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptised with water, but you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. I'm not requesting. I am instructing you, said Jesus, stay in Jerusalem. Well, that's one paraphrase of the reading. Stay. How many times we've heard that word before? Just Stay, stay at home. You don't need me to complete the rest. And Jesus said to his closest friends, stay, stay in Jerusalem. Now the many differences between our staying, those who are staying at home, and those disciples who were staying in Jerusalem. But I point one out to you. Those who are staying at home now are staying home that others will be able to get on with their work particularly the NHS, but other key workers. They stay at home so they don't complicate matters. They don't get in the way. They don't get ill. But in this story of Acts, everybody was staying. Nobody was working. Nobody was going out to spread the good news of the resurrection of Jesus. They were all staying. There were, at that point, not the selfless, sacrificial workers that we give thanks for now. Everybody was staying. If friends of Jesus stayed and awaited. There were no other workers busy in the task of the kingdom. There was no plan B. Thank God those people didn't fail of us. What were they waiting for? We read on that in the next verses. John baptised with water, but you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. John baptised with water. Let's not undermine John. He spoke strongly and fiercely and courageously in the cause of truth and of justice. Face to face, took huge crowds, to the rich, to the powerful, to the weak and to the poor. And we need men and women like that who speak courageously. But the friends of Jesus were not just promised that. They were promised that they would be baptised with the Holy Spirit. Full of the very power of God that had raised Jesus from the dead. Now at this time of horror and of difficulty we need that power. We need that love right now. And we thank God for the signs of goodness and hope that you can see if you dig just that little bit deeper into this difficult situation. The applause, the appreciation for the heroes who were there to save lives, to heal, to help, to feed. Out of the horror comes the joy and the sacrifice. Let me tell you one story. In my last 13 years as vicar, I was in villages near Coventry. And taking one funeral, a family told me about how their father and grandfather as a young man stood on a hill and he watched Coventry burn. What horror he saw. And yet, of course, out of that terrible horror, in the end came hope. And now Coventry is a centre for peace and reconciliation throughout the world. So we pray that out of this horror will come goodness and peace and courage and compassion. We cannot return just to normality. We need to come into a new world. 
And so I'd ask you these two questions. What signs of goodness are we here to celebrate? And how can we ourselves be open to the power of the Holy Spirit working in us and through us? O Lord God, let us pray. O Lord God, you raised Jesus from the dead. Raise us all to new life, we pray and ask this in your holy name. Alleluia. Amen.